Hey guys, today we are going to the RV Hall of Fame Museum in Elkhart, Indiana. And they actually allow you to boondock here. We got here last night. There was a couple RVs here. They all left before the evening settled in, but it was really hot, wasn't it, Lana? Yeah. So what did we do because it was so hot? We played in the sprinklers. Yeah, they turned on the sprinklers for all the grass around here and the girls, since it was about 90, what, 8 degrees out last night, we played in the sprinklers for about an hour. And then what did you do? And then, I don't know. You rode your skateboard? Yeah. Rode our... Popsicles. We had popsicles, rode our skateboards, because huge parking lot with no cars in it. So what, what else would you do? So now we're gonna go into the museum, take a look at all the older RVs and show you guys around. RV in here is from 1913 and it's a travel trailer pulled by a Model T Ford. is a 1957 Cerro Scotty 12 foot travel trailer. To me it looks like a little dollhouse, a little playhouse for kids, but it was made so that it could fit inside a residential garage. Excuse me. <laughs> and there's this dip down in the middle so that you can stand up in the kitchen. But I'm only 5'2", that's not a lot of room, so. So this is what I call Pappy's camper, because Pappy likes so come on in. Hello. So I'm gonna give you the grant tour. Two people can lay up here. Um, one person can make this their bed. They can also drive in there. Um, there's storage here. There's a toilet and a shower. And a sink. That's pretty good too. And there's ah, this thing all closed. And then there's this tiny little stove and oven. A tiny sink and lots of storage. And that's how you open it. And then we got a pretty nice dinette. And more storage. So this actually, it says outside, was kind of the later versions of the truck topper ones where they actually took someone's truck, they would remove the bed and the back and kind of custom fit this on. And this was the beginning of class C's, which you can kind of tell the load of the cab over and driving in front. So this one here behind me is the Spartan Imperial Mansion. It's actually 42 feet long, which is kind of impressive for a mobile home that was built in 1954. In the front area, there's a massive living room, more counter space than you would need in a motor home right here. Refrigerator behind me, full stove. And then as we get in the middle, because we're not done yet, bunk beds, for the kids, storage on this side, more storage, bathroom with a fairly, si fairly decently sized bathtub, 
full residential toilet. And then this is where the master bedroom would have been. And there's actually a second door on the other side of the trailer, right back here by the master bedroom. This one here is my favorite. It was a custom RV made in 1988. Um, it was built on a 1976 Cadillac, but I like it because it's really one of a kind. Obviously it's custom, but look at this thing, how like sleek and modern and cool it is. Let me take a look on the inside. I like it because it's so different and sleek and modern. That's totally my style. Check this out. Just for 1988, it's not gaudy and brown and disgusting. This was pretty hip and cool back in the day. Um, although I'm not a fan of the bathroom. I do wish it had a full bathroom, but this is pretty cool. Lana and I decided that our favorite is the same one. This is a tricked out GMC XF15 that someone restored to the tune of almost half a million dollars. And unfortunately when the renovations were complete it was actually too heavy to be viable as a roadworthy RV. Uh, they have a full washing machine and dryer in here. There's a wine cooler right here. Uh, flat screen TVs, they've got electronics. Everything that you might imagine in a $500,000 tricked out travel trailer. It's not a travel trailer. <laughs> we'll cut that out. Uh, today I'm going to give you a grand tour of my favorite RV. So. This is a table and dinette. It's really smooth over here. And you can see this is the couch. It has some drawers under here, which you can't open. Up here, there's a driver's seat and passenger's seat. And as you can see down here, those cups and a plant and some storage here and the bathroom. And then in here, there is the washing machine. That's kind of crazy. And then these cabinets. Here. We have a satellite receiver, a TiVo, a DVD Blu-ray player, and a 7.1 surround sound system. And then custom power panel here for all the electronics that are in this thing. Winnebago Vista Class A um, with one slide. It's fancy, it's big, and I'm gonna give you the tour. The thing I like the most about this RV is how big the storage compartment is. So you can see um, right there, there I could have a playroom, a bed, and two shelves. And I could leave these, the storage compartment doors open and it could be my house. So you're gonna live by yourself underneath? Yeah. And we'll live, we'll live inside? Yeah. And then over here, big storage compartment. There's lots more. And now, let's go check the inside out. Anna told me to buckle up. 
because she's driving. I think that's probably a good idea if she's the driver. I think we should all get out if she's going to drive. There's a brick wall right in front of you. So there's a big bedroom back here. Um, decent sized bathroom. Big dining area over there. And a pretty large kitchen. But my second favorite part is that is a bed that actually slides down when you're not moving. And you can actually lay on it. I thought you had a bedroom outside. I know, but that would be Lana's bed, not my bed. Buckle up, everybody. Let's get moving. Well, that was pretty fun. Yeah. I would highly recommend, if you're passing through the middle of Indiana, cross country, it would be a great fun stop. We spent, what, maybe an hour and a half in there. We could have spent more time, but we got to travel today. Um, so highly recommend it. It was great. It was really fun checking out all the different kinds, seeing some history. Uh, the girls loved it too. Yeah, and as a plus side, they do allow for boondocking in their parking lot two nights actually. Yeah. The night before you see the museum and the night after you see the museum. So you can get two free nights of camping out of it. Unfortunately, there's no hookups. There's no water. There's no gas. Gas. Electric. <laughs> But uh, it's peaceful. I mean, you're by the freeway, so there's the freeway yeah, noise. Yeah, freeway right there. Um, uh, but, but the noise dies down at night, yeah. so it's not too bad. No. We just got here on a really bad night that it was extremely hot. So it was yeah. kind of miserable, super sticky today. But we are done. We're heading out. So we'll catch you in the next video. See you guys on the road.